guy that will put a smile on your face every time you see him. And it's no surprise that he and Jerry Eastman are good buddies, as you'll see. The two of them are constantly working on ways to make their pulsars better and more efficient. It was very windy when I had to grab an interview with him, so I apologize for some of the wind distortion in the audio. But it can't take away from Ricky Thomason of Collierville, Tennessee. Uh, no, actually, it's my second plane. Uh. <laughs> 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 now, the, <laughs> we, we, we tell everybody we're friendly competitors. That proves it, right? <laughs> it's my second project. I built an Avid Flyer first. And then I flew it around for about a year and a half. And I, I, I started to do the Pulsar first. But uh, two things kind of kind of kept me from it. One, and I've got no rationale for this, but in my mind, I did not like a wooden spot. And two, uh, the Avids and the Kid Foxes have been around a long time, and I figured it would be a good, safe, first-time project, because I didn't know how well I was going to do this, you know? But uh, after flying the Avid around for a while, and when I found out that Mark had went to a composite, laminated composite spar, then I went to San Antonio and uh, visited the factory. So, if you fly this airplane, if you're thinking about building one, if you fly a Pulsar, you probably will buy one. <laughs> and so I knew before I left that day I was going to be buying one of these kits. It was a matter of working the deal. <laughs> so but within a week, I had purchased one, though. If you ever put together a model airplane as a kid, uh, you can build one of these pretty much because it's, it's basically just like that, except guess what? The parts are bigger. And it's the epoxies, you bond the, the pieces together and everything. Now, how much of it do you want to do it all yourself? Or do you want to do, uh, uh, if you don't trust yourself with electronics, there's a lot of people in the group here that, that know electronics, or you don't want to paint it, somebody else can paint it for you. Uh, I've enjoyed building it, but I built it to fly. And it, it, no, it's not difficult to build at all. Yeah, I, had a, I started out with Sussness. I had a Cessna Cardinal and I went to a Comanche 250 and then I had the Avid and then I built the Pulsar. And uh, this airplane is IFR equipped and it has, uh, I fly it just like I did the Comanche when I had it. If I want to go and I want to fly, I get in the plane and I go. Uh, I have always avoided thunderstorms and lightning and continue to do so no matter what I flew. <laughs> it is IFR and by, the Pulsar will carry a, a Pretty nice load of ice, too. Uh, I don't recommend you go out and do that on purpose, and I didn't, but uh, I do know from experience it will. <laughs> well, a lot, of, a lot of people with the Pulsar have had problems with the exhaust systems uh, cracking. Some people have had more severe problems than others. Uh, I flew the standard AD exhaust system for 700 hours, and I had, uh, I had one break at about 80 hours, over there on that side with a short pipe. A little short pipe was a big problem child. And after that happened to me, I came up with a little brace uh, and shared that with everybody. The brace the canister, which was supporting, the, the short pipe was supporting the canister. Once we put that little brace on there, I didn't have any more problems. I was, I, I was through. But other people added the brace and they still had to continue to have brakes and everything. So, a couple of years ago, I actually thought of this in my mind, but I wasn't having too many problems and I wasn't sure it would work. Uh, about three months ago though, this, this canister over here, the tailpipe cracked around the bottom. And I figured another builder, Larry Eubanks, had had a problem with this. The center vertical stack pipe had actually corroded all the way in two from the blast of the rear exhaust drain. And then that let it move and so it cracked around the bottom of the can. So I figured I had the same thing. I had it fixed and reinforced where it didn't matter if it was broke, it wasn't gonna break again. But I knew it was a matter of time, same thing was gonna happen over here. So I thought, okay, it, it's time. It's time to do what I've kind of been thinking about. So knowing that my system was about to wear out and everybody else would benefit from this if it did in fact work out, I had this vision of a, of a small muffler on each side right here. The pulsar cowling is so tight, there's, there's not room for many alternatives in here. Well, the old system had a vertical can here with a, an exhaust flow of about that long 
from the rear cylinder into the canister, and an exhaust flow of this long from the front cylinder to the canister. Totally, totally unbalanced. And certainly no way that I could see any, any, any way it could be at all. So I wanted to come up with a small muffler for each side that would sit here comfortably inside the cowling and balance out the flows from, from all the cylinders. So that's what I've achieved with this right here. Each cylinder, the exhaust stream that goes travels exactly the same distance. I won't say that it's, it's not a tuned exhaust, but at least it's a balanced flow exhaust. I gotta run some numbers on it to see how to tune it for cruise RPM as far as I'm concerned. Now, if performance is any indication of whether you've got back pressure or not, and again, I, I'm not ready to claim increased performance from this system, but I will say definitively, it didn't hurt a thing. Because <laughs> right now, it appears that with the, the only change being the exhaust system, and unfortunately, I knew better, but I did it anyway, I made another aerodynamic change. There appears to be at least a five mile an hour increase in speed at a given RPM setting on a two-way opposing speed run. But again, I won't say that to the exhaust. The, there's two priorities when I did this. Uh, one was to come up with something that it would hopefully help out everybody else that's having trouble with these things. They're not, the, the systems they were running, everybody was getting, they were carrying, some guys are carrying around ex spare exhaust systems when they travel. Uh, that's, that, you, don't, you know, you, that's not good. <laughs> so. I, I made it out of real heavy stuff. I wanted it to be a safe fix for the problems we're having. It is secured to the engine, bolted on both ends. There will be no vibration here. And uh, uh, so the first priority was safety. Second priority is increased performance. And it's too early to say whether I've achieved either one, but I think I've got both going here. <laughs> a friend of mine, we determined the, the, the cost of that extra drag up there. That little thing that breaks on these folks all the time and gets gnarled up and twisted and everything. <laughs> what you need to overcome that is about 15 horsepower. So what does this guy do? He goes out and gets a set of pistons, makes up, gets a set of pistons put together that gives him 15 more horsepower. So we run pretty doggone close.